Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Louis Reyes, and I am your exchange's senior enlisted advisor. I am so excited for today because it's almost lunchtime, and I am hungry, and we have a special, special treat, something that's never been done on the show, right, Julie, Leah? Yes, right. you're right, Chief. Absolutely right. Always right. Oh. Oh my, let's get this going. I'm not even good at, everybody knows who you are already. Let's go, Julie, you mind introducing our guest? We have a really special guest with us today. She is the youngest person to be on Chief Chat. So that's something. <laughs> and <laughs> she is, <laughs> and she is going to share with us some cooking inspiration. She is a talented, talented chef, and she brought something really special and a little spicy with us today. Please help us welcome Yashika Nabar. <laughs> Yashika, 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 Yashika. Hi, everyone. My name is Yashika Nabar, and I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I'm 16 years old. Yashika, thanks so much for joining us, and for everybody watching Thank you for watching too. Drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. If you have any questions for her throughout the broadcast and we'll try to get you answers. And now's a good time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. So let's get this going. Yashika, 16 years old, mm -hmm. right? You still have a full life ahead of you. Right, correct. And you have a long life and you have a long life behind you, right? You have 16 years on this earth. So much correct. experience. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I got into cooking when I was around five years old. And that sounds really young, but I basically got into like the basics of cooking. So just mixing and having fun with soups and ingredients and kind of experimenting. And I think it's really important for people to start like understanding food at a young age. So um, I got the privilege of being able to start cooking when I was really young. And then from then on, I just kind of experimented with different foods and cultures. And I think it's really cool that, you know, foods are tied to cultures as well. So being able to kind of travel to a new place by eating like a bite of food, I think that's really an experience that you can only get like by trying food. So um, that's why I really like food and why I got into cooking. So I hope that everyone else can try that too. <laughs> and you have a great story because you're sort of famous. You brought your cooking talent to TV at age 12. <laughs> Tell us about being on Chopped Junior. Yeah, so it was, it's probably one of my, you know, how everyone has that little story about them when they talk about their fun facts. That's probably my little fun fact. Um, it was a really big experience. And I think me being 12, I thought of it more as like being on TV than being in a competition. So I was more like kind of starstruck. But whenever I thought about it more, it was just like an incredible experience. Like it's really an experience that you can't take back. Just like spending a whole day cooking and being on TV. It was just kind of like my two favorite things collided. So it was really, <laughs> I loved it. I'm excited because this is like round two, right? <laughs> she's, she's back on Facebook TV and she's going to cook for us too. <laughs> Excellent. So tell us about the dish that you're making today and what yeah, inspired so, you to do that one. So I decided to choose a uh, Kima. And if you think about it, um, it's, I mean, if you think about it on the Indian scale, uh, from one to 10, it's around 1000 because <laughs> it incorporates lots of Indian spices. And I think that's really important to an Indian dish, especially if you're going to present it to a lot of people who haven't gotten quite, you know, a big basis of what Indian cooking is like. But um, I chose a dish that incorporated a lot of Indian spice. And it tastes really good with like your traditional naan and rice and things like that that you might find in regular Indian cooking. Um, it's a really good spicy and meaty dish that everyone can enjoy. And there are lots of things you can substitute it with, which makes it a really versatile dish. And I think that everyone will really enjoy this dish. Well, I, I am hungry. Like... <laughs> I want to eat right now. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't wait to, I can't wait to try, but Yashika, 
do you have any any social media channels where people could find you at or you know if they're interested in learning more yeah so uh i'm going to be posting more on youtube now but my youtube channel is just yashika um i also have my instagram <laughs> yeah, just yashika um <laughs> How do you spell that? How do you spell that for everyone? How do you spell that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Y-A-S-H-I-C-A. I also have a cooking Instagram where I post like little videos of me cooking. And that is called <laughs> wow. Yashika Cooks. <laughs> um, nice. Yes. And then I also have my personal Instagram, which is Yashika Nabar, which is Y-A-S-H-I-C-A-N-A-B-A-R. Well, hey, let's get this going. I Yashika is such a unique name that you can't miss it, right? The minute you type it in, I'm sure we'll find you. So if you're interested in learning more about cooking, follow Yashika, 16 years old. Maybe, you know, we'll see her on uh, the next, uh, what is it, America's Top Chef or, mm. or <laughs> yeah, right? Or Bobby Flay Beatdown or whatever it is. Oh. <laughs> it's the next Robert Irvine right here. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's right. So thank you, Yashika. I'm not going to hold it up anymore. Let's get this going. Yashika bringing us a nice Indian dish called Kima. My name is Yashika Navar, and today we are going to dive into the depths of Indian culture by doing a modern approach to a traditional dish. We are going to use ground meat and a various amount of traditional Indian spices to take on a dish called Kima. So for this recipe, let's take a look at the ingredients. We are going to use two chopped onions, five diced tomatoes, two pounds of ground lamb, boiled peas, cilantro, lemons, green chilies to garnish, and green chilies to add to the dish. Now if we take a look at our spices, we will be using Himalayan salt, turmeric, cumin seeds, garlic salt, bay leaf and cardamom, chili powder, vegetable oil, black pepper, ginger garlic paste, a few cloves of garlic, and a homemade recipe for garam masala, which is a blend of zesty and aromatic spices. So let's go ahead and get started with this dish. First, we're going to take around two to three tablespoons of oil, kind of get the pan a little greased up. All right, it seems to be warming up here, so let's go ahead and add our cumin seeds. We're gonna have a little popping action here but that's how you know that it's working. We're also gonna use bay leaves and cardamom, around two bay leaves, three cardamom seeds. Use your own judgment, get creative with this dish. It's a really basic dish. You can really have fun with it and express yourself with it. Let's go ahead and add our onions. We have some sizzle happening. Ooh. <laughs> Little popping happening. <laughs> You need to make sure to evenly coat every single bit of ingredient so that every bite will have a piece of flavor inside of it. Now we're gonna go ahead and add some spices. So first of all, we are going to start with our chili powder. And add as much as you feel like you need. I like a decent amount. That should be pretty good. Just kind of mix it in a little bit. Delicious. Okay, the next spice we're going to add is a little bit of garlic salt. I honestly, I kind of have an addiction to garlic salt just because it brings a lot of aroma to honestly whatever, you know, dish you want to make. After that, we're going to add ginger garlic paste. So what I like to do is I like to leave a little bit of room to add it. And then I like to go ahead and drop it in. Let that sizzle a little bit. This is going to be what brings a lot of the flavor in, along with the um, cumin seeds and bay leaf. Wow, you can already see the steam right here. Um, you know, there's some steam action happening. Okay, let's go ahead and add our next one. So we're going to add um, my mom's homemade garam masala, and it essentially has clove powder, coriander powder, um, cumin powder, cinnamon, black peppercorn. So basically, a lot of Indian spices mixed into one that really bring kind of warmth to the dish. Garam means hot, and masala is like spice, so it basically, it 
literally means, you know, hot spices. So it would be really helpful to add to any Indian dish. Now, we're going to add a little bit of turmeric, but we're going to save most of it for when we are cooking the meat. And we're going to add just salt to taste. I like to add a good amount just to start. And the reason why I'm not using iodized salt and I'm using Himalayan salt is because my theme with this dish is to bring kind of a modern touch to, you know, what traditional ways are as of cooking. So I think that adding Himalayan salt will bring it kind of a freshness and make it a little more modern and different from how most of it is cooked. Use whatever you have around the house, but I like using Himalayan salt just to add a little bit of my own touch to the dish. Let's go ahead and prepare our meat at this stage. I have over here some ground lamb meat, but you can also use ground chicken, ground turkey, anything of that sort. Honestly, whatever you prefer, but I like using fresh lamb meat. Here I have a nice little blend of my ground meat. To this meat, I'm going to add some salt, pepper, and turmeric, just to tone down the red meat flavor to it. Um, I'm not a fan of it personally, but if you like it, feel free to add the spices to your liking. Salt and pepper are essential to meat. And now I'm going to add some turmeric. I'm just going to slightly incorporate it in there. Let's go ahead and check on our pan over here. All right, so now that we have some aroma happening, we're going to go ahead and add our tomatoes. All right. I think color is important to a dish because it really attracts the eye. And not only that, it makes your food taste better because looking at how colorful your dish is makes you just want to eat it more. I'm going to go ahead and turn up the heat to around high. Now we're going to add some green chilies. When I say that I add green chilies to my dish, a lot of people say, what? Green chilies? That's going to be really spicy. But really it's not. It adds a lot of depth to the flavor. It has a kind of bitter undertone, but that's what sets up a really good base for adding just more flavor on top. It looks delicious. I think I'm going to add a little bit more oil here because we're running a little low on fuel. <laughs> it's a joke. Okay. <laughs> so now that our tomatoes are cooking, you know, most of our ingredients are coated with the spices, I'm going to go ahead and set a little bit of room aside to add my meat. Okay, now let's let that cook. The important thing here is that we want to be separating the meat often so that it doesn't, you know, clump together. If you think of it as scrambled eggs, scrambled eggs you often have to kind of break it apart so that there are little bits and pieces of the egg. Just like that, with the meat, you're going to break it apart pretty often and just stir it so that it cooks evenly and that the bits and pieces are, you know, spread out across the dish. I'm going to add a little bit of salt here. So now it's coming together, so I'm going to kind of mix it all in. We don't want it to fry because that's going to be a little more of a different kind of dish. So we're going to add around a fourth of a cup of water or so, just until we can get a gravy out of this. Okay, that should be good. I think now I'm going to let it cook on its own and add a lid on top. But before that, we're going to add a little bit of fresh cilantro. Just sprinkle it on top to pull in some more flavor. We're going to grab our lid and just put it on top. So now it's been around 10 minutes or so, so I see a lot of steam coming from this pot and it smells delicious, so I can't wait to go and check this out. So let's go ahead and take off this lid. Ooh! This looks delicious and I know something that will make it even more delicious, which is some boiled peas. This is traditionally added, you know, this is a traditional part. You have to add peas to kima. Nice. Kima has kind of a signature smell to it. And once you start cooking it, you'll know. But hopefully you can smell that at one point. And just to add a little more zest, I'm going to juice a lime on top. It, having a good salt to water ratio will really give you enough flavor to be able to taste you know, all the big spices that come with the dish. We're going to go ahead and throw the lid on top 
for around five minutes and come check back on it to see how far it's come. All right, so now I'm back. Let's check how this turned out. We ended up cooking it for around 20 minutes just because the meat wasn't as tender as we liked it. So make sure to check often, taste the meat, make sure that it's to your liking. Taste the dish often. This looks delicious, smells delicious. So let's go ahead and plate. Now let's taste the dish. I'm so excited, this looks really good. So the traditional way of in eating Indian food is usually with your hands. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this bao, and I'm gonna take some of this, kind of just bring it in. Let's eat it. Mmm. <laughs> that is really good. <laughs> there are a lot of flavors in this dish and I can totally taste it. I want you to go out and try this dish. It is so good. So signing off, stay happy and healthy. Once again, this is Ishika Naber. Thank you for watching.